It's the AL Central taking on the East. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Tampa Bay Rays. It's the MLB on 2K Sports. Teams who contend yearly for a division crown. One in the Central and one in the East. It's the Sox and the Rays from Florida. He'll go to the mound in hopes of bringing a W to his team. C.J. Wilson, if he's on, a pretty good chance of getting that win. Thank you for joining us Thursday night, Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. C.J. Wilson came out of the bullpen to turn himself into a quality starting pitcher. He has the stuff to get lefties and righties out. Very aggressive with that fastball. And a big sweep and slider to put the hitters away. Let's take a look now at Ozzie Guillen's thoughts, his lineup for this one. John, who do we keep an eye on? Well, a big part of this lineup is Paul Canerco, the veteran. But what you need with veterans are guys who can produce on and off the field, and that's what Paul Canerco does. In the clubhouse, a great leader, but on the field, a run producer. It's going to be Jackson now. Yesterday, the Rays taking the loss, but after taking the first two of the series, still have a chance to take three out of four against the White Sox. He bunts the ball. Foul ball. That's foul. Pitching unable to get it done in the tenth of that last one. Well, it was a heck of a battle up until then, but they just couldn't hold on. And he lays one down here. Correct. And that's the first out of this ball game in the books. Well, he's clearly bunting for hit all the way here, but not able to get it where he wants to, and they were able to make the play. Got a chance to check out the Rays on defense as they'll be outfielding. And, John, how about uh, individual factors out there? Well, Robinson Cano, to me, is the smoothest fielding infielder I've seen in baseball in a long time. Looks like it's so nonchalant, like he doesn't care. When that ball leaves his hand, he possesses one of the strongest throwing arms of any infielder in baseball. Base is empty, one out. Wilson gets set ball. and delivers. Can't get him to chase it. That's low, ball one. You know, with, for a pitcher to be successful, you want to keep the ball off the sweet spot of the bat. The cut fastball does that. The 1-0 pitch. 1-0 pitch is a fastball high, 2-0. And the beauty of that cut fastball, Steve, is oftentimes the delivery motion is the same as you see with a fastball. Well, it's exactly right. They try to gauge it. It has that running action and movement either away from the right-hander or into the left-hander. On the slider, 2-0, and he missed it, 2-1. Well, guys, anytime you can throw a converted reliever into the rotation and get the amount of innings and the wins that C.J. Wilson gave the Texas Rangers, you know you have something special. 2-1 pitch. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And he pulls into first base with that base hit. There's one down here. John said for C.J. Wilson, what a transition it was into the rotation. 15 wins, Steve. I mean, he had more innings pitched in 2010 than his previous three seasons combined. A big workload for him, but he's in great shape. He handled it well, and he had dominating performances at times, especially late in the year. Ball. Cutter just misses, 1-0. Oh. Now, 2010, the Rays go back to the playoffs within that window with their good young pitching and good young position players making a run to try to get to another World Series. They came up a little short on that goal, though. That one swung on, hit in the air, deep to left field. Two away. Well, the core, the real core of that team with Tampa Bay is no longer what it was. We'll see how they react to that. Well, you know, Gary, they're always good at rebuilding from within. Good young talent from within, but you're right. They may have to go through some growing pains this season before they figure it out. And it's Paul Canerco now. Hitting 250 lifetime against C.J. Wilson. A line drive towards short. And Canerco's got himself a single. Let's take a look at how Paul Canerco performed last season. Second batting average with runners in scoring position. Second home runs. And he was also ranked in the top five in on-base percentage. A real asset for his team to give his team a chance to score runs and have the run producers drive them in. Baines in the box. Well, a couple guys on right now, Gary, with speed at second base. We'll see if they try to put pressure on him and try to start both runners. If they throw him out at third, they'll still have a man in scoring position. 
And Davis will try and hold him there. No balls. One strike. Here's Wilson. Missed with a fastball outside. And it's even at one. That one's drilled to short. Fielded by Ramirez. Throws to first in time. That's three down. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. And the Rays, their first chance coming up. Going to take a look now at the starting pitcher for the White Sox. Steve, what's he looking at as he sees this Tampa Bay lineup? Well, a good right-hander on the mound in this one. And if he executes the scouting report against this lineup, it shouldn't be too difficult for him to come up with the outs necessary to come away with a win. And the bottom half of the first now underway. 1-0 count. Well, that's just some good old country hardball right there. Forcing fastball up in the zone. 1-0 on the way. That's up high. Crawford stays off. He hit 379 last year against the White Sox. Two zero on the way. Ball three. Ball three. And you know with three balls on him here, Crawford can be very selective. You saw their last game. You saw what a big part of their offense he was contributing with three base hits. And now Crawford has that hitter's count. Three and one. Credit the catcher on that one. That's a good low target setting up, and he hit the target. Good execution. No pitcher wants to start an inning this way. This is a free pass. Oh, managers go crazy and pull their hair out when they see the leadoff walk. A good eye at the plate right there. He showed the discipline to lay off of that inside pitch. The Rays lineup looks like this. Thoughts, John? Anybody stand up? Well, a guy that came out of nowhere, Jose Batista. The power is starting to show. Everyone thought he had this potential, but he never got the playing time that he thought he deserved. Now an everyday player, he's putting up monster numbers. He's running towards second. Great one. And it's not in time, and he beats the throw. Two strikes on him. Cano, a good contact hitter, will just look to put it in play. Had a real strong offensive game last time out. Three big base hits. And Cano swings and hits this one. One down. Now a quick look for this game at the White Sox and how they are positioned in the field. And Chris Davis to bat. The American League East can be tough on teams. In the 2010, the White Sox found it tough, but they were up for the fight, splitting their games against that division. One on, one out. Ball Fastball one. just misses. One and oh. That split the White Sox had against the East was 17 and 18. Unfortunately, uh, the only team they could come away with a series win against was Boston. Well, you know what? That And, Gary, we talk about that. They came up just one player short. It seemed like they just didn't have that last little piece to overcome their toughest opponents. A swing and a foul off to the right side. 
Here's the delivery. And this is hit in the air. Foul down the left field line. Tried to track that one down, but comes up empty. Here's a spin and a throw back to second. Didn't look like he was going to go anywhere that time, so he's easily back. Checks him at second. The one-two pitch. Good patience, Davis, letting it go by. Pretty good eye. The count is even. On his last game, came so close to hitting for the cycle. Got the home run and the single and double, but unfortunately, just couldn't come up with a triple. Fastball well off the mark, and it's full three and two. And now the pitch to Davis. Swings hits this one. It's going to be fielded by Jackson. Two retired here. Here's a look at the hitting champions from around the league last year, courtesy of State Farm. Ichiro, number one. Robinson Cano is second. Third is Adrian Beltre. Fourth spot's held by Michael Young. Fifth best, Josh Hamilton. Well, if you want to see a lot of hits, watch these two guys here today. Last season, two of the top batters in all of baseball with the ability to get hits. And that's what these guys do. They put the ball in play. They give themselves up when they have to to shorten their swing, take a more defensive stroke. But they always seem to be on base via the base. Headed for the middle. Oh, and he makes the catch. He was just trying to get out of the way that time. He ends up with a ball and an out. That's some kind of play by the pitcher right there. You release the ball. You think, maybe I can take a little bit of a break. The ball comes right back at you. He got his glove up and made the out. So they can't push any across here in this half of the inning. We're scoreless Tampa Bay. Looking to the lineup, six, seven, eight hitters on their way to the plate. And Weaver's batting. He'll start it off here in the second. There's a strike from Wilson taking the count to 0-1. You can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. Runs up to Bunt. Gets this one down. Ends up foul. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a liner towards first. And this could be extra bases heading towards the corner. And this rolls all the way to the wall. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Now he has no business swinging at this 0-2 pitch. It's out of the strike zone, but he's thinking, I have to protect. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> and that pitch was really away. I mean, that's, that's a ball. Base runner at second with nobody out. Way out there with the curveball, 1-0. and They went with the big curveball off the plate, trying to get him to reach for it, but he lays off. Pauses, and now the 1-0. Cutter just off the black, and he falls behind, 2-0. Cutter just misses, and he runs it to 3-0. and Well, 3-0 count right here. Hey, look, I'm giving the hitter the green light and letting him swing away to see if he can do some damage. Spins, checks him at second. Wasn't very far off the bag, so he gets back easily. Here it comes, 3-0. Cut fastball, taking all the way, 3-1. Same thing here, selective 3-0. Now you can still be selective on 3-1. Make him throw it where you want it. Here's a spin and a throw back to second. And he's back in standing up. There's a swing and a drive. Deep right field. This one to Jones. As he re runner on his way to third. Here's what the Rays have in store. The Chicago series ends tonight. 
They can look forward to a competitive series. The Blue Jays at Rogers Center. That will be a three-game series. After that, they meet up with Joe Maurer, a road series facing the Twins. That series bound to be competitive. And it's quite a few road games coming up, and that's always challenging. Number seven man at the plate. And on third, one out. Wilson gets set and oh. delivers. And he lays off one low, one and oh. The one oh now. Oh. That's outside, ball two. That fastball is in for a strike. Two and one. A cut fastball just ran inside on the hitter's hands. He had no chance to even get out and swing at it. Tough pitch. Now the 2-1 pitch. 2-1 delivery of fastball. Taking for a call. Strike two. That's a good four-seam fastball. You establish the bottom part of the zone. Then you run the heater up in the zone. A lot of time it becomes a take pitch. One's going to be down low. Three and two. Good spot there. Just down a little bit out of the zone. Tried to get him to chase. He wouldn't go for it. And on a full count. This is pop foul to the right side, but playable. That one's taken care of. And a look at next Sunday. It's going to be Sean Figgins and the Los Angeles Angels. They'll be hosting the Boston Red Sox. going to be a live broadcast starting at 3.30 Eastern. And their rookie left fielder at the plate. Man on third, two outs. Swing and a liner to left. That's in there. Should score the runner. Well, this is exactly how you plan a game. You make sure you take advantage early in the game, get that offense going to get that run on the board. It's going to be Jackson now. Well, this offense, Steve, it's on the move, and now they'll try and carry this on in the ballgame. Well, you have to credit this lineup, Gary. Some quality at bats right now and taking advantage of the opportunities, and now they have a lead. Runner on first, two away. Here's the first pitch. Swung on a fly ball down the left field line. Crawford's there. That one's grabbed. Side retired. A strike here in the second, getting a run across. The White Sox have the lead, one to nothing. Beautiful night indoors, Tropicana. Off to the west where you can see a bit of the moon out there. And it's Jose Bautista in the box now. First pitch way out of the zone, ball one. He set 284 lifetime against the White Sox. Here's the 1 0. 1 0 delivery is a fastball in there, 1 1. Uh, coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out, so got to be seeing the ball pretty well. Here's the pitch. Swung on and ripped towards second. And Bautista set down. Well, we're not too far along into the baseball season so far, but let's take a look at how the Rays have done so far in comparison to the rest of the American League. First in doubles, fourth in strikeouts, and they also show up in the top five in slugging percentage. A real strength in scoring runs, that ability to hit it out of the ballpark and to score runners from first base, even when they're not in scoring position. And uh, Dustin Pedroia up. Huh? 
One out, nobody on. Ball. Off the plate with a fastball, and it's 1-0. And he takes a strike on that fastball. 1-1. One, one. When you can spot your four-seam fastball to the outside corner, the hitter has to have balance at the plate and not pull off the ball. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike takes two. a swing at that fastball. Doesn't get to it. 1-2. and two. One two pitch coming and Dustin Pedroia watches that one go by the count is even well you saw the catcher right there setting up inside and the pitcher just missed off the plate still a pretty good pitch though the pitch Pedroia hits this one Weaver two down and here in the early part of the season we have a look at the Central Division standings brought to you by State Farm First place, the White Sox. Twins in the second spot. Third, the Royals. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody. Sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And here's Adam Jones. Lifetime, 2-2-5 two, two, off the White Sox. First pitch he let go by, and it uh, was a ball, 1-0. The 1-0 pitch. That catches the inside part of the plate. 1-1. One one. Good looking fastball. Called the ball though. 2-1. That's a foul ball. Foul. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And that's a knock for Jones. Well, you're going to have to keep a close eye on this guy at first base. Pay a lot of attention to him because you know he more than likely has the green light. He can go at any time. And a shot here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. On the base pass, number two and steals in the ball club. That one swung on, hit, and Jackson... And that's out number three. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand. The White Sox maintaining their lead. In the box, their third baseman. He'll start things off here in the third inning. And Santana spotting the pitch. Strike one. Wilson got him to swing at it. 0-1. Well, it's tough to tell a hitter to stay back on a fastball, but this is what he needs to do. He's jumping out, trying to get to it, and just way out in front. Here's the pitch. Our speed pitch is in there, and he falls behind 0-2. This is why changing speeds is so important for a pitcher. You get the hitter off balance even more effective when it's down in the zone. to get him to go after that slider but it's one and two a pitch like that just locks the hitter up when it's in on the hands cutter almost rung him up but it's two and two
Now the 2-2. That's in the dirt. He traps it. And here's the 3-2. Popped up. Should be playable behind the plate. Out recorded by Santana. That's one away. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they ranked. Second in batting average with runners in scoring position. Second in stolen bases. And they showed up in the top five in home runs. A power-laden lineup that could drive the ball out of the ballpark. Home run production, a major part of the offense. First pitch, here it comes. Strike one! Strike one. Wilson got him to swing at it on one. Here's the delivery. Swing and a miss, and he's behind on the count 0 and 2. This is pop foul to the right side, but playable. Had a look at that one, but can't come up with it. He deals. Foul! And he swings and hits this one foul. Well, when a pitcher throws a pitch like that, you expect to get the strikeout. Great piece of hitting defensively to keep this at bat alive. Slider swung out and missed. Two down. Well, this is where you want to go with two strikes on the hitter. You want to go down out of the zone. He swings through it, couldn't make contact with that one. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. Second at ERA, third in batting average, and they're ranked third in team batting average with runners in scoring position. Having that ability to come up with the clutch hit, being able to relax and know that the pressure's more on the pitcher than on the hitter. Base is empty and two down. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. Not a lot of action in this half inning. Nothing on. White Sox one, Tampa Bay nothing. And if you just joined us, our broadcast of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with John Cruck and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. Here's one hit very well deep. Jackson. And he grabs it in his tracks. Looking back to last year, let's check out where the Tampa Bay Rays ranked in the American League. First in stolen bases, second in triples, and it's all about offense when you're going to try to win ball games. You've got to score runs. Third in the league in runs scored really shows that offense is a real asset for their team. And so with one down, we'll see Carl Crawford. He's the top ten in stolen bases for the league. Here's the pitch. Ball. Fastball misses away. 1-0. Oh, you're going to manufacture runs. You need to have somebody who can move, and that's what he does. And He gets on base and takes the extra bases as well. Here's the 1-0. Oh. It's now one ball, one strike. He watched that fastball that was in there. Fourth straight appearance in the All-Star game for Carl Crawford. He's become one of these guys that you'll see in the Midsummer Classic for years to come. 1-1 one, one pitch. This one swung on, hit down the line and right. And it falls in. Hitting streak continues. That'll bring up Robinson Cano. And as nice as recognition is, John, uh, for Kyle Crawford, the talk should be about MVP probably. I mean, this guy's one of the best players on a very good team. Yeah, I think because he doesn't hit home runs, people kind of dismiss that. But I Gary, I'm with you. He impacts the game in so many different ways to help his team win. He does it defensively, getting on base with hits. He can drive the ball and steal bases and scores a ton of runs. In the top ten in hits. Well, this is where Carl Crawford's speed comes into play. He can absolutely fly one of the best base stealers in the game. Foul. 
You'll see Canerco holding him in there. Well, he's getting the job done this year, no question about it. Such production, so consistent. Cano gets this one. He picks it up. Gets one at second. And they turn the double play. It's called short work of three. Took six pitches. No run yet for Tampa Bay. Baines is the batter now. And you got to love the young talent in his rookie year. And the first pitch. There's a strike from Wilson taking the count to on one. Down, down, down. It's all about location. That breaking ball down in the zone makes it very difficult on the hitter. The pitch. Swing and a rocket towards short. That one gets through for a base hit. Look at the teams who led the league in slugging last year. Brought to you by State Farm. Blue Jays number one. The Red Sox in second. Third, the Yankees. Fourth, the Twins. And at number five on the list, the White Sox. Well, slugging percentage plays a key part in any team's offense. And this team was one of the best in the league last year at doing that. They seem to hit for extra bases. You know, everyone says, well, they get on second base a lot, they score runs. But also, they drive in a ton of runs with all those extra base hits that they get. That's why their slugging percentage is so high and why they're so successful. First pitch was a strike, 0-1 now. Oh, and he lays off the fastball. Good pitch, 1-1. Oh, it's a great fastball right there down in the strike zone. Now there's so many ways to go. Let's see how he comes back to attack this hitter. Here's the pitch. Pitch in the dirt, blocked by the catcher. Here's the 2-1. Oh. Fastball on the black. He doesn't get the call, though, and it's 3-1. Well, anytime you have a count 3-1 and one in your favor as the hitter, you're looking for a pitch in a little box in the location you want to. If he throws it in there, you better be ready and get a good hack at it. And that one is going to be outside, and that is ball four, and now you've got a base stealer on. Pitcher tried to expand the strike zone to get the hitter to chase, but he didn't chase. Take your base. Eastern Division standings starting to take shape here in April. You're in our State Farm standings board. Yankees in first place. In the second spot, it's the Orioles. It's the Blue Jays in third. Red Sox seated fourth. And it's the Rays in the last slot. Well, this Tampa Bay team has just not been able to live up to the challenges this season. Uh, and it's developed into a very disappointing year, both for the organization and for their fans. Oh. Eddie watches the low pitch from Wilson. At the belt, the 1-0. Oh, that one in the dirt. Good play by the catcher. Kept it in front of him. Now swing and a shot towards second. Yeah. Tito for one. And they get two. Great double play. That Keystone area can get a little rusty. Nice turn on the double play. Just the way they draw it up. Great pivot by the shortstop. And the number eight spot rolls around. Popped out of foul territory last time. Two outs, a runner 90 feet from scoring at third. The first pitch, and he watches the low pitch from Wilson. Wide fastball right there, just missed, just below the knees. Tell you what, a borderline pitch. I think they wanted that one bad. The 1-0 now. 1-0 pitch, that's a cutter in there, 1-1. You can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. And the change up one and two now. 
A very effective pitch. The changeup painting the outside corner. Now you can go back hard in or go soft away again. Long bite at the change. Two and two. Here's the delivery. And it's fouled away. Foul ball! Three, fastball two. is low that time. The count runs full. Well, anytime you have a good fastball and you can keep it down in the zone, around the knees or lower, it's great location and, believe me, very difficult to hit. The full count pitch. He's got the bat on that one. And Crawford's there. And there's the third out. And C.J. Wilson heads in. And we'll see the Rays coming up next. Things will start getting difficult with the third man in the order lurking ahead. If you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crook and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. And Chris Davis to bat. Here's Davis's first look. Swinging from the heels, and he missed it. 0-1. Oh Again, okay, we're into the fourth inning right now, and as you start to flip the lineup over again, you know, they've only gotten two hits, so they're going to have to really evaluate what they should be looking for at the plate, and maybe they need to be a little bit more patient and make them work. This is pop foul to the right side, but playable. One away. Now a look uh, at the teams who generated the most runs last year, courtesy of State Farm. The Yankees, number one. The Red Sox in second. The Rays, third. Fourth spot, Rangers. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. Well, this is a pitcher's dream when you have an offense like this on your side. You know you're going to get a ton of runs. You don't have to be so precise. You can let runs score because you know your offense is going to pick you up. The good thing about this team is they like to score runs. They like to score them early in the game. That gives your team a lot of confidence. Hamilton will take it up high. Well, guys, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better all-around player in baseball than Josh Hamilton. The potential of being the number one pick by the Devil Rays came to fruition in Texas. A swing and a fly ball in the left center field. Two away. Well, he hit this one well, but it hangs up long enough to give the left fielder just enough time to run underneath and make the catch. Jose Bautista, he's at the plate with two down. He's the team's most walked batter. Fresh count of Batista. Here it comes. Swing and a miss on a ball out of the zone. The pitch. Ball. Jose Bautista watches that one go by. A ball evens the count. He hit just 185 last year against the White Sox. Strike Good two. rip at that one, but he misses one and two. This is pop foul to the right side, but playable. And that's out number three. And so out of the inning, only eight pitches thrown. That's pretty efficient. The White Sox maintaining their lead. Number nine spot at the plate again. He'll get us started here in the fifth. First pitch on the way. Drops down a bunt. Picked up by Wilson. Over to first for out number one. Sometimes you have to bunt the tough pitches, but when you get an easy one, you have to get it down. You've got to get the job done if your team's going to win the close game.
Bases empty with one away. And the first pitch. There's a swing and a ground ball. Now it's two down. And the number seven batter in the box. One for two in the ball game. Two outs, bases empty. Wilson gets set and delivers. Lined foul towards third. Hard grounded a short, fielded by Ramirez. Throws to first side, is retired. No strikeouts, but you talk about confidence. Four pitches, three batters gone. White Sox one, Tampa Bay nothing. Do up six, seven, eight in the lineup. And it's Pedroia batting. 330 career average against the White Sox. And here's the first one. The 0-0 delivery, a fastball taken for a strike. They need more offense right now, Gary. I mean, you know, only leaving two runners on base. You know, we're moving through the middle part of this game, heading into the later part of the game. I mean, they need to give themselves some opportunities to score runs. Patience at the plate. Get somebody on. And Dustin Pedroia watches that one go by. The count is even. Fastball gets away from him there, two and one. Strike Good pitch two. that time at the knees, two and two. Missed inside with a fastball. The count runs full. Well, a good pitch right there. He tried to get one in on his hands, but he just missed, though, in off the plate. Great pitch. Payoff pitch. Pedroia oh! will foul that one away. The 3-2 pitch. That one's drilled to short. And Pedroia's got himself a single. So Adam Jones will come up now. Here's a look at the State Farm leaderboard. The players with the most triples last year. Carl Crawford, number one. Orlando Hudson is second. Evan Longoria, third. Adam Jones, fourth. Also in the top five, Kevin Euclid. I'll tell you what, speed puts so much pressure on the defense, and these guys can certainly do that as they force the other team to quickly make decisions and make plays and try to shut down a running game. Runner on first base, nobody out. And the pitch to Jones. He squares around and he gets this one down. In time for the up. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. Tonight, their final game with Tampa Bay. Following that, they'll be on the road to play the Tigers and uh, one of the game's best hitters, Miguel Cabrera. Great series there. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Following that, they'll have a road series to play the Yankees and their premier star, Derek Jeter. Another team at the top of their respective division. So, they'll be on the road quite a bit over this next stretch. RBI situation, Alexei Ramirez. Well, you're waiting for Alexei Ramirez to put up those monster numbers. And guys, I'm not so sure he can put up the big monster numbers that we anticipate he can. But when your shortstop can hit like he can and field like he can, you have to be very happy with what he does for your team. Oh. First pitch fastball misses badly that time, 1-0. And, and on Alexei Ramirez, John, I agree with you. I mean, may, maybe they're not gaudy numbers, but they're consistent numbers and they're major league numbers that he's putting up. They are, but I think he has more in him, but I think he has to show some patience, and he really hasn't shown that so far. He likes to prove he can hit by swinging. I'd like him to prove he can hit by taking a pitch.
On the way. Swing and a line drive. That's one. Decides not to try for the double play. Hangs on to it. Here's a look at the teams that uh, drummed up the extra base hits last year. Our State Farm leaderboard. Blue Jays number one. The Red Sox in second. In third, the Yankees. Fourth, the Twins. And at number five on the list, the Rays. But well, the bottom line is, as a hitter, you want to put yourself in scoring position any chance you can. Well, this team does it as good as anyone in the league at extra base hits. Seems like every time you look up, there's someone in scoring position making the pitcher work and the defense work extremely hard. Here's the 1-0. That swung on, line towards the gap in left center. And there's the third out. They pick up no runs on one hit and leave a man at second. No runs yet for Tampa Bay. It's going to be Thomas. A terrific talent for this team. And here's the first one. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. And Jones tracks it down. Now our State Farm sponsored look at how the league home run pace was set last year. Well, this is a list of hitters that strikes fear in the opposition pitching. They have to because they know with one swing of the bat, they can change the score of the game. One away. Here's Paul Canerco. Well, just when you thought that age was going to catch up with Canerco, here he goes throwing up gaudy numbers once again. 312 average, 39 bombs, and drove in over 100 runs. An unbelievable year for Pauly. Wilson gets now a swing and a ball hit well into right field. It's got carry. Goodbye, home run. They'll take that one run homer. They need that. Now the lead is two. Well, he drives this one out to right field. He got under it just enough to hit it out of the park. That's why you'd like to pull the ball once in a while. A little shorter distance to get it out, as was the case there. That's right. It's a game of fractions, and if he hits it a little more to center field, that ball's an out. White Sox lead expanding here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. One out, base is empty. First pitch on the way. Strike Takes one. that first pitch low in the strike zone, strike one. Steve, a big fly like that at this point in the ball game. You, you start thinking, you know something, we're going to win this ball game. Well, backbreaker, boy, that kind of power shows the other team that, you know what, you always have a chance to catch up or extend your lead. Oh, Looks two. at a fastball in there, and it's quickly 0-2. Well, the hitter's got to regret that one. He missed his pitch right down the heart of the plate. Four-seam fastball. That hurts. And here's the pitch. And he lays off that one outside. One and two. Well, he didn't chase that one. That pitch down and away. Good movement on the cut fastball. He just laid off of it. It's a pitch with two strikes. You better be swinging at, though. Fastball, that's well off the plate, two and two. Two-two pitch. Here's a swing, line drive down the left field line. And a fantastic catch by Crawford. And Weaver's batting. Blocked in his last plate appearance. Base is empty and two down. And the first pitch. That pitch was out of the zone from Wilson.
Now the 1 0 pitch. Line drive. Oh. That's foul towards first. A shot up the middle, played by Cano. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. White Sox by two. It'll be the leadoff man trying to get things going here. And if you are just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne along with John Crux, Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. The pitch taps this one foul to the right. Here it comes. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Contact time for Kyle Crawford. Well, outstanding pitching effort so far here. I mean, he's left three runners on base in this game. I mean, but he's just shutting down this lineup, and when he needs to make a pitch, he seems to always find a way to do it. Crawford will foul that one away. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. And he'll put that one away for out number one. Now the State Farm leaderboard gives us a look at who hit the highest average-wise last year. Number one is Josh Hamilton. Miguel Cabrera is second. In the third spot, Joe Maurer. Adrian Beltre fourth. And it's Robinson Cano fifth best. Now we see some tremendous hitters on this list. Guys who understand how to make good contact at the plate. And get the good part of the bat on the ball on a consistent basis. One out, nobody on. And Cano ready for the first pitch. Watches that fastball. That goes by him for a strike. Last season, very good. Seven for 25 off the White Sox. Pitch on the way. And with two strikes on him, Cano, a good contact hitter, will just look to put it in play. Well, he just reared back and said, here it comes, big boy. Here comes my best fastball. He busted him inside with it. One and two. Fastball is up high, then it's one and two. Well, that pitch right there just seemed to get away from the pitcher, took off on him. Looked like he tried to overthrow that a little bit. The one two on its way. Oh. Cano's going to foul it away. Here's the pitch. That swung on, hit on the ground. Fox. Oh, that's two gone. Oh. Now State Farm takes a look at last year's leaders in on-base percentage. Boy, a tough group of hitters right here to pitch to. They battle, they scratch, they claw, they find a way to get on base, and they really wear down the opposing pitcher. Two outs and nobody on. Here's Davis's first look. Ball. Fastball runs inside, 1-0. and oh. A solid 357 lifetime off the White Sox. Here's one high and away for a ball, 2-0. Oh. Here it comes, 2-0. Oh. And he comes back with one in there, and it's 2-1. and one. Tough pitch to hit right here when you run this fastball up and away. You have to elevate your swing to get on top of it. He ends up taking the pitch. Call for a strike. It'll even the count at two and two. A fastball up in the zone like that. A pitch a lot of guys like to hit. He just couldn't swing the bat. Ball three. 
Gave him a fastball that time, but it's outside. Three and two. Well, you watch how the hitter reacted to that. He had thoughts about chasing that pitch, but at the last second decided to lay off of it. The 3-2 pitch. And that one gets popped way up behind the plate. Good oh, effort there, but he couldn't get into position to make that play. There's a swing and a smash. Jackson. And that's the third out. That'll do it. An outstanding effort so far in this one. Six shutout innings, making pitches when he needs to. Defense helping him behind him. An outstanding team effort so far. No runs yet for Tampa Bay. And Fox will settle in now. He'll lead off the seventh. And the first pitch. Oh. And he watches the low pitch from Wilson. Oh, it's a good pitch there. Tried to get him to chase it out of the zone. He just laid off. The 1 0 pitch. One good one. cut fastball in there. 1 and 1. Well, outstanding movement on the cut fastball, but he left it out over the heart of the plate. He got away with one right there. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. Out. And that's in plenty of time for the out. And it rolls around to the top again. Flew out last time. Base is empty. One out. First pitch. Can't get him to chase that one outside. Ball one. Swings. Hits this one in the air down the right field line. This one to Jones. He comes in a little. Gets the out. Number three slot up again here. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Base is empty with two outs. And the first pitch. There's a strike from Wilson taking the count to 0-1. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. That one's on the ground, but he gets it in front of him. Ugly pitch. Catcher able to somehow scoop that out. He delivers. Oh. Won't commit on that hard slider. Now three and one. Well, the starting pitcher right now is over 80 pitches. And this is a time when the manager and the pitching coach have to keep an eye and see if his velocity is dropping. If it is, you might want to think about getting him out. Strike can two. make contact on that bunt attempt. That's a strike. percentage that's ball four well, his patience really paid off there and it could pay big dividends now if somebody come up with a big hit well the hardest thing to do when you have an at bat that lasts this long is sometimes you have a tendency to be impatient and chase one give the hitter a lot of credit it was a close pitch but he laid off of it to earn that walk two outs and a man on first Here's the first pitch. He sends this one in the air towards center. 
And in there. He has struggled today. Now finally a base hit in the record book. State Farm leaderboard recaps the biggest group of thieves last year in the league. Rays number one. White Sox in second. In third, the A's. Fourth, the Mariners. And we've got the Rangers. They are fifth. Well, you talk about a game that could take a long time. This might be it. Anytime you have guys who can steal bases, the game just seems to slow down. That's what kind of pressure they put on the opposition. But both of these teams have the ability to steal bases. They were two of the best at it in the league last year, and it just puts so much pressure on the opposition when these guys get on base because you know they're going to be in scoring position soon. Two down. Runners at first and second. First pitch on the way. Hit sharply down the line. And he gets that one down. His second hit. Two for four today. And he'll come in to score. Well, he brought in the right. He thinking he can get out of this inning. But that move backfired as the hitter comes through with a big hit. It's going to be Thomas. And they've not had to struggle here at the plate in this game. They just keep building on this lead. Offense coming to life late here, tacking on additional insurance runs, taking the pressure off the pitching. Two men on, two men out. First pitch to him. Ball. And they throw wide to start the at-bat. They may be uh, wanting to put him on. Johnson with a windup. 1-0 is a fastball that runs away 2-0. Well, they may not have put it away, but they sure are making it a lot easier for the guys coming out of the pen. Well, they wouldn't mind making it a little bit easier right now. That Another big hit could really put it out of reach here, Gary. Here's the 2-0. He watches that fastball. That goes by him for a strike 2-1. Well, oh, it's a quality fastball right there. Just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. Come set. Strike two. Two one pitches a slider. Taken for a call. Strike two. Down, down, down. It's all about location. That breaking ball down in the zone makes it very difficult on the hitter. The two two pitch. Struck him out. He gets out of this with just a little hurt. So they pick up a run on two hits and they leave a couple. White Sox up three. And Josh Hamilton up 0 for 2 thus far. Here's the first pitch. That one fouled off by Hamilton. Ball. Ball Hamilton isn't fooled by that pitch, and the count is evened up. Now, Gary, it's tough to score when you only get three hits. We're deep into this ball game, and they have just not been able to mount any pressure against him today. 1-1 one, one pitch, fastball, high, 2-1. Well, he tried that four-seam fastball up in the zone to get him the chase. Tough pitch to lay off of. Good job by the hitter. 2-1 pitch. And Josh Hamilton swings and misses on that one. That'll even it up. Two two pitch, fastball well off the mark and it's full three and two. Well, any hitting coach will tell you you can't hit that good high fastball, especially if it's out of the strike zone. It's a pitch you have to lay off of, making bring it down to give yourself a chance. Three two on the way, and a ground ball. There's Canerco. Let's take a peek back to last season and what Josh Hamilton did and how he ranked. First in batting average, first in slugging percentage, and patience and batting average paid off. His on-base percentage good for second best in the league. That willingness to find any way he could to get on base and help his team.
Runner on first. Plays off that one outside 1-0. Ready with a 1-0. Fastball just misses and he falls behind 2-0. Now the 2-0 pitch. Drilled towards third. That gets down. The tying run coming up. Hamilton's heading for third. Well, even though they lost the last game, he had two big hits, and that's a good sign if you're the manager of this team. He's starting to swing the bat really well. And now it's Dustin Pedroia. Chance here to capitalize for the Rays. Bautista's on at first. On at third, Hamilton. Strike Shots one. him off with a pitch on the outside corner. Strike one. He looked like he was ready to swing that time at the plate, Gary, but he must have been looking for a different pitch as that fastball just paints the outside corner. The pitch. Oh. And Dustin Pedroia watches that one go by. The count is even. Well, he tried to go outside on the outside corner with that fastball right there. Just got a little bit off the plate. He's got to be careful, though. You don't want that hitter to get his arms extended. Comes set. Now the 1-1. One, one. That's on the outside corner. 1-2. and two. Outstanding mechanics right there. He gets all of his body into the pitch. Great velocity on it. A strike away. One, two pitch coming. You're Rings out. him up. You can almost taste the adrenaline right now, Steve. You can just tell he's getting stronger as he goes along. Uh, he's got so much confidence. He's just knocking the bats out of the batter's hands. We've got a second now to see the four-seam fastball in K-Cam. And it's Adam Jones. Great offensive opportunity for him. Runners at first and third, one away. And the pitch to Jones. One. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect 0-1. Here's a swing and a fly ball. Two away. That's a big second out right there. Holding on to a slim lead. Now he's got a chance to get out of this thing without any major trouble. What a great opportunity for Alexi Ramirez to show what he's made of and to come up big for his teammates. Lined out last time up. Runners at first stand third with two away. And Ramirez settles in first pitch. Fastball is downstairs. One ball, no strikes. The 1-0 now. A smash between short and third. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. And a frustrated lineup indeed. That's now seven shutout innings. No run yet for Tampa Bay. Canerco at the plate. The first pitch. Strike one. And that's in there. Johnson ahead, 0-1. Some guys really like the low fastball. In this situation, though, he ends up taking the pitch. On the way. A swing and a ball hit high into the air. Right field. This one was crunched. Gone! A home run! Add one more to that lead. Fly ball out of here. Four up.
Well, that's number two on the day for him, Gary. That means that bat's right on target. Well, he's picking up the ball very well. White Sox lead expanding here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Base is clear, no outs. First pitch, here it comes. Fastball in there, 0 and 1. This game is not a done deal yet, but boy, when you get those kind of hits this late in a ball game, you're on your way probably to a W. And now the manager's got to start thinking about, okay, my offense has gotten the job done. What's my bullpen going to do? Hit hard to second. And Cano picks it up. And his throw is in time. First out of the inning. And Weaver's batting. One for two in the ballgame. One out, nobody on. Here's the first pitch. And he watches the low pitch from Johnson. Good spot there. Just down a little bit out of the zone. Tried to get him to chase. He wouldn't go for it. Here's the 1-0. The 1-0 delivery is a fastball. Can't make contact. Strike one. Boy, that's some kind of fastball down in the zone right there. The hitter has to be ready for it or he's got no chance to hit it. Pitch on the way. Strike and he two. lays off that one, but it's a called strike. One and two. The pitcher showing that he can effectively throw strikes on in the inside part of the plate. The hitter now has to make an adjustment, possibly opening up for that pitch next time. The one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Slider, two down. Boy, it took four pitches. No wasted time right there, and he got him. What I liked the most was he was very deliberate with what he had to do. He knew he had he can go out of the strike zone to get the punch out, and that's what he did, getting him to swing. And Fox will settle in now. Grounded out his last time up. Two outs, space is empty. Now the first pitch. Watches a fastball that's in there. 0 and 1. He's painting the black away with that fastball, Gary, hitting the spots and with great velocity. And the 0-1 by Johnson. 0-1 is a slider for a call strike. This is pop foul to the right side, but playable. And that's going to do it in this half inning. So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. The White Sox, four-run lead. And Santana's in the box. 0 for 2 thus far. And here's the first one. Oh Can't get him to chase that one outside. Ball one. Look here, listen. He's, he's made pitches. He's at, they've had a few base runners on against him. No question about it. They've got a few hits. But he's, not, he's been able to keep them from putting hit after hit after hit together. He's kept them off the scoreboard and let his defense do the work. 1-0 is a fastball that runs away to an 0. Well, you can see what he's doing. He's just pulling that ball away from him, trying to overthrow it, and he can't seem to find the strike zone. He has to be able to rein that thing in right now. Strike and he takes a fastball for a strike, two and one. A 
swing and a drive deep into left field. Back to the wall. And gone. A home run, and the shutout is finally broken. Well, the shutout broken up right there, but I tell you what, no shame in the performance he's given in this one. He's been outstanding. When you throw your four-seam fastball, you better locate it. If you make a mistake, good hitters are going to make you pay for it. He's paying for it now. Comeback wins can be tough to come by. Tampa Bay drawn close. Could they get a comeback win today? Come from behind wins are tough to get, especially against this team. But they're a little bit closer right now. They got the feeling. Bases are empty with no one out. Here's Crawford's first look. Good pitch from Burley. Swung on and missed. Well, not a whole lot you can do when a pitcher's locating that curveball down in the strike zone. There's just not a lot for the hitter to get accomplished with that swing. You just hope to foul it off, and he makes a mistake with the next one. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on the ball that was off the plate. 0 and 2. Crawford ground ball. Fox one away. Away. Let's get a look at Robinson Cano. Two for two last year against Mike Burley. And Cano ready for the first pitch. Lays off that one at the letters. 0-1. Well, trailing right now, down three runs. You got one out here in the eighth. You got five outs left is the way you have to look at it. They need base runners. Get people on and hope somebody runs into one. A three-run deficit, not too much to overcome. Cano's going to foul it away. Swings and hits this one deep down the line and left. As he drops back and puts it away. And Chris Davis to bat. He flew out his last time up. Two outs and nobody on. Here's Davis's first look. That one's wide as Burley misses. Now listen, this is still doable from the offensive perspective, Gary. They're only down three. It would be nice to have a little two-out rally right here, pick up some runs, narrow this three-run deficit. But understand, you can still come back and finish it tonight. Just don't wait till the night. And Davis with a swing and a miss for the strike, and the count is now even. Career, he's gone three out of six tries against Burl. And that swung on and hit. And Jones. And that's going to do it in this half inning. Well, they chip away, grabbing an important run with that solo big fly. 
Nice job by the Rays. They've got to work their way back, and they've started. We'll get a look at that leadoff hitter due up here in the inning. Number two spot in the lineup up again. 0 for 3 to this point. And the first pitch. And there's the pitch inside from Johnson. A Gary Slider, such an effective pitch, and it, it, it's this guy's put-away pitch. When he needs the big out, that's where he's going to go. Great he lets the 1-0 pitch go by, 1-1. Gary, you know, we talk about his slider. What makes it so effective is that break, that depth and width to the pitch. It, it goes through two planes, so it's tough to center. Swing, hot shot. Ooh, look out off the pitcher. Bounds away. And he gets in there easily. And the throw is too late. He's in there, an infield single. Well, that's the start this team needed. Get that first guy in the inning up, get him on base, and let's see if they can bring him around to score. Well, you've got the lead right now with speed on first base. You have to get him going, I think, Gary. Ground ball to Davis. There's one. Over to first and safe. Very close play. They will not get the double play. But when you're setting your defense, you don't set your defense for guys not to hit the ball well. This ball wasn't hit hard, but he gets down the line so quickly he's able to beat it out for that base hit. Runner at first with one down. Johnson with a windup. The fastball is in there. It's 0-1. Hitters have to have great balance and be prepared for the pitch away. If you open up even a little bit, you can't catch up to that four-seam fastball in the outside corner. That's swung on and a liner here. And there's one. And he's going to hang on to it. No relay. So they will not get the double play. Up now their rookie third baseman. Had an RBI single his last time to the plate. Two outs and a man on first. He's running. And he is safe at second. pitch runs that one in on him can't lay off though one and one some guys throw in some guys pitch in he pitched in right there to get the strike now let's see if he pitches away the one and one Ball. blow it outside two balls one strike well Gary that's a slider down and away and it just slides out of the strike zone the best hitters in the game lay off it because they know if they put it in play it's an out now the 2 1 pitch. Oh, that misses outside. We go to 3 and 1. Well, even though you're 3 and 1 in the count, you still have to be patient at the plate. Make him throw a quality pitch. If he does, be ready for it. And if you're the pitcher, you better not throw anything down the middle and hope he's taking it because he can take you out of the yard. That's going to be a call ball four, putting him on. That's good plate discipline by the hitter right there, waiting the pitcher out, forcing to throw it over. Our State Farm leaderboard takes a look at the players with the RBI lead last year in the league. Well, two of the biggest run producers in baseball last season are going to be playing in this game here today. And I tell you what, the best way to pitch to a guy who drives in a lot of runs is don't let a lot of guys on base in front of him. If you do, you're asking to lose the game. Now, Gary, although they have a lead, it still is fairly a close ball game right here. You have speed at second right. base. I might give him the green light and see if he can get over to third. And the 0-1 by Johnson. 
Lays off that fastball, and it's 0 and 2. Fastball runs inside. That'll dust him off a little. Well, he barely got out of the way of that one. That's definitely, though, going to keep him from crowding the plate. Ball. Fastball just about had him, and it's a 2-2 count. Gave him a fastball that time, but it's outside. Three and two. Runners go. Three, two on the way. Fastball swung on and missed. Side retired. So they pick up no runs. One hit and strand a couple. White Sox four. Tampa Bay one. Josh Hamilton leading it up. Hamilton gets set. Here's the delivery. That one's wide as Burley misses. I like right now they're looking to get a couple guys on and see if they can't get somebody to hit one out of the ballpark right here. So base runner's the key. Do not run into outs. Be conservative on the bases. You're down three. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. They take care of that one. Two outs remaining in this game. You're up by three runs. I think right now you just want to make plays. Don't walk anybody and catch the ball. Get out. Straight outs for runs. Well, Evan Longoria is a game changer. And the fact that he can change the game with one swing of the bat. But I tell you, when you have a team that, that you can just stick him in the middle of the lineup, he's going to be a proven run producer. This is a guy that you want for a long, long time in your lineup. Well, you can't blame the manager here. Playing the percentages. Bringing in the right-handed hitter against this lefty pitcher. Let's see if it pays off. Ball one started off the at-bat. It's 1-0. Oh. Well, a cut fastball up and in. That's exactly where you want to go. Good discipline by the hitter because he couldn't do anything with that pitch. one oh on the way. And that's off the plate. Away. Ball two. Lifetime four for 15 off Mark Burley. Swing, liner, back up the middle. And it's through. That's a base hit for Longoria. Let's take a quick look at Evan Longoria's season last year. Second in doubles, second in triples. He was also ranked in the top five hitting with runners in scoring position. That ability to drive in big runs for his team, he handles the pressure very well. And now it's Dustin Pedroia. Longoria is the runner at first. Fresh count on Pedroia. Here it comes. And Burley gets it by. Called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. He just plain old fooled him right there. He must have been looking for something else. Hit his spot perfectly with that changeup. Ball. That one's in the dirt. Nice stop. Here's the pitch. Pedroia will foul oh. that one away. Oh. Pedroia fouls off another. Well, still a pitcher's count right here. And this is when you step in the batter's box. You didn't want to get in this situation. But now you know it's a battle. You're going to have to... And that swung on and hit. And Jones... And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. 
Well, anytime you see a pitch that far outside, you have to marvel at the fact that how did he get such a good piece of wood on it? But he did, and he got a base hit. And it's Adam Jones. Last year, one for three off Burley. Runners on first and second with one out. And the first pitch. He swings and drives this one. Two down. And that keeps the runners at first and second. What a great opportunity for Alexia Ramirez to show what he's made of and to come up big for his teammates. Grounded out his last time through. Pedroia is on at first. Longoria at second. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Hit on the ground. This could be the end. And on to first for out number three. And that's going to do it. A tough loss here for this crowd today. But boy, do they see some, some kind of pitching performance from the visiting team. Now we're going to award our player of the game. Paul Canerco. Canerco just made all the difference. Well, it just seems funny that every time you need a big hit, it seems like the middle of the lineup happens to be up. And that's what happened in this game today. The third here came up with that big hit to help his team to the victory. And Steve, they're able to put this one away in the record books. This is a good victory. Hey, anytime you can go on the road and beat another major league team, you've got to consider yourself fortunate. Well, that time again, thanks for being with us today, Major League Baseball. For Steve Phillips, John Crock, and the rest of our great 2K sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks, everybody.